Hello, hello. My mixes are switched up a little bit, so... It's a little bit more manual, but... You know, it is what it is. Hi, Kitty. I've got to tweet out about it again. Um, but today what we're going to be... <laughs> yes, Kitty. Um, today what we're going to be looking at is... Take a little bit more of the documentation organization with Antari. That's something that we've been talking about a fair amount recently. Um, I don't think it's going to be long stream, but there's a few things that I want to touch on and then look into and compare. Oh, I guess Kitty is saying hi. Hey, Kitty. Meryl. All right, um, okay, tweets. Yes, you can sit on my lap. Just don't put your tail in my face. All right. We're chatting a bit about the Tari docs on stream today. Stop by. Keep it simple, I guess. All right. Um, my goodness. Your tail is right in my face. And. Oop. Okay. So let's switch over to. Switch over to pairing mode here. Um, so what what we've been looking at is let's uh, pull up the uh, peer that I opened. Um, we've been discussing how we want to. Ooh, wow, Fabian. More of a brain dump, probably missed. Um, some, some notes about the bigger picture. Um, so distribution. Updating packages doesn't make sense as it's about the cargo NPM packages, not the Tari app itself. This is the problem when the live version ha has two as its position there suggests the same. Um, let's open up uh, the deploy preview so we have a little bit of context, um, or at least so everybody watching is the same context that I have. So put those side by side like that. All right, so this is kind of what we're looking at. This, this is one of, one of the iterations. Um, I suspect we'll continue to refine it. Um, but what they're saying is we put updating packages within distribution. Um, yeah, new mic. Um, pretty good, I think. What do you What do you think about the sound quality? It. Uh, I unboxed it on stream yesterday. Um, clicking in around in the options, I definitely crashed the stream because uh, one of the options sets up a mixer with a bunch of new audio devices, and that crashed OBS. I mean, I figured stuff wasn't going to go perfect. Um, and there was a couple of like settings that I didn't have quite dialed in, or I had turned them off and then forgot to turn them back on on the stream. Um, so I spent a little bit of time yesterday uh, evening sort of refining it. And it seems like it sounds pretty good. I think I'm happy with it. I mean, I've got my laptop is. Can't really see it, but like I could touch it, and it's not quiet. <laughs> that uh, that fan can spin up pretty loud, and it's just a little laptop fan, so I'm I'm sure there's a fair amount of vibration in there too, which um, makes sound. And then I got an air conditioner on the other side of that wall, and 
outside on the other side of that wall and refrigerate there refrigerator right there and it seems to cut out the sun pretty good that plus the uh, um, expander that it uses I can show you the uh, software real quick now that I've turned on this distraction so that's the software and I, I, I definitely really appreciate so, so this this was the mixer I can do a bunch of routing which I haven't completely set up um, and I think I'm gonna whenever the other Mix create comes back in stock. I'm probably going to pick one of those up because it'll be nice for the uh, um, to have that those analog buttons for the audio writing. Um, and this is the main EQ. This is kind of what I ended up with my EQ. Basically, knowing nothing <laughs> and sort of using their guides and a couple of the videos that they released and other ones that I watched. So. By no means an audio expert, but uh, I feel like I was able to get pretty good sound out of this. I do need to remember to be closer to the mic, which um, I'm not quite as used to, but, you know. I'm happy with it. And the, this, I appreciate this too. because things don't always work and like my stream deck or the chat app says I'm muted, but I'm not actually muted. But if I mute it at the mic level, I can literally see it on the mic. <laughs> I guarantee that's going to save me from accidentally trying to talk and, uh, or, you know, realizing afterwards that my mic is muted. But Okay, so... <clears throat> the what we're looking at is um within Tari right now we've got a dock sidebar and it's okay based on conversations within the team and with people going through it um it it's definitely could be organized better I think and this is sort of what we are uh making a pass at. So I opened up a PR yesterday, um, and Fabian had a few comments, and I was just reading through them. So the they're noting that updating packages doesn't really make sense in distribution, but doesn't really make sense anywhere else. And they're thinking that it's best in development. And I think I tend to disagree, because the only time that you care about updating your, putting in like an app updater in your app, is after you've published it. So like updating your package doesn't actually matter. Oh, this is not selected very well, is it? Updating your package doesn't actually matter until you've distributed it. So I think we want to say <clears throat> the, the thought here is that one wouldn't need a better posture. Um, one wouldn't need to look at setting up their app for updates until they are ready or have already published the app. As far as long as you are working on it, Don't. As long as you're working on it, uh, the initial development phase 
where you would look at the development section. So as long as you're working on the initial development phase where you would look at the development section, you don't need to know about it. More dis... My cat is... My cat is looking at the green screen and is moving and I can see the whole background moving out of the corner of my eye. Um, Discord, more Discord fishing going on. Yeah, yeah, it, it seems like it's uh, that's a pretty decent issue. Um, I hope they deal with it. It's especially with all the NFT stuff going around. I feel like that the general bot scam kind of thing is just amped up more than it has in the been in the past. Okay, uh, rename. Back to introduction. Actually, the name is right, but the position of the item is wrong. It should be after the three setups. Yeah, so this is another thing. That's probably the big thing that I want to uh, tweak a bit um, on stream right now. Is So we have a setup. And those setup items could potentially be things that are skippable by somebody that has them installed already. Um, so somebody in the Rust ecosystem that has touched anything on the JavaScript side of things, which is sort of, there's a Venn diagram of people coming from Rust and of people coming from like JavaScript tooling. And there's that overlap. And I think there's very few... The, like the the number of people that are pure Rust with less node knowledge is going to be smaller than the people that have some node background. So I think it's probably a reasonable assumption that the people coming to look at Tari are going to have at, at least the, um, until it hits the zeitgeist more, people coming into Tari for the first time are likely going to have node and Rust installed, which probably means they're also going to have Xcode on Mac and potentially the build tools on Windows. Um, the build tools on Windows might be a little bit more heavy, uh, especially some of those build tools. But um, you want to set it up in a way where somebody could come in and be like, these are the things you need, like a little list, like something that I can glance at and say, okay, I got those, I'm good. Let me just try it and see what it see what happens so I'd, I'd initially like we were organizing these up into this so we definitely need to address the getting started um and i don't know if that's a pull it in or out i'm not really a fan of moving back to getting started but mainly because we just changed that <laughs> but it would remove a redirect again i'm honestly less worried about redirects at this point but um I mean, that's definitely worth calling out. And yeah, we're, we're moving stuff around a, a bunch that I think we're going to add. Need to redirects are going to be a thing. <clears throat> um, we definitely, uh, so, so there's some clarity that needs to happen around the architecture sub nav. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do is add it in a couple stubs just to make that more obvious. Um, cause there is, and we had discussed it on a discord call, but we didn't go any further than that. Um, I really do prefer getting started. I think somebody actually messaged me about that. Um, Yeah, it seems like getting started is sort of the most common. So like pain in redirects, but it's something we can deal with. Okay, 
So I, th- I think we'll just deal with this. Um, so to, what we would need to knock out is some stubs for the architecture sub nav. Um, they have a weird vibe, but because they only contain one item, fair. Those are definitely going to expand though. So, um, we're basically this is just a, a PR moving things around. Yeah, so I I, th- I think the big concern here is that we've added a bunch of these top headers, but like some of these only have one item, which is completely fair. The expectation though is that we're going to expand that. Um, the here I should do. Um, I don't know if I could. I suppose I could probably put this in the PR. Um, so this this was something that uh, when us, you know, I don't know if you're watching or not. Is it Jonas or Jonas? I don't know if you prefer the or if you use the hard J. I'm gonna guess it's Jonas, based on educated guess, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've, I've I've actually ever said it out loud. Um, all right. Hey, Nikki. It is one of those fancy new Beacon microphones. I read the chat from before I joined in. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think uh, I think it sounds pretty good. I had tweaked the settings a little bit. Um, happy to uh, continue to digress on it a little bit. Um. So this is kind of the, the main part of the software and these timeline charts, I think are super helpful for dialing things in. I don't consider myself an audio expert by any means, but I feel like I got a pretty decent sound considering just watching a couple of videos and relying on their guides. I think I'm happy with it. So. Um, and I'd like to do more mixing stuff, uh, because it's got a bunch of audio writing things, which will be real nice, but I, I need to put some more time into that. Um, so yeah, we, uh, pretty much the idea is that we're going to have build tools and front end frameworks end up going into the architecture. So we, we're going to need sort of like a, an intro to the architecture. And I think we might have some of that started in one of the other guides that we shifted. So I might be able to pull that back in here. Um, but debugging and testing, I think we're going to end up having a bunch more in there. Um, so we probably want something about testing your front end. Um, we have the web driver stuff. Web driver should be able to, but that's a little bit more of a low level thing that can hook into the window that window or windows that Tari creates and do more of the OS native type functions. Um, whereas if we were just running Jest or Cypress or something like that, functionally the tests that are running are going to could potentially be the same in the uh, the web view versus uh, or in a in a browser versus the web view. Um, so the like the web driver was sort of the low level fundamental piece that we needed to get in place uh, before we could really dive into the testing. So I, th- I think as the current state, as it is, um, what Fabian is saying totally makes sense. But we're not going to write all that in this PR. So I think these are just going to be a pass. I'm going to... I think I'm going to make some stubs in the architecture just to make it clear what's going on there. Debugging and testing, I think, are going to naturally develop. Um, and then we want to adjust the getting started. So we'll, probably, we'll, we'll hit on those things. Um, so we'll say um, debugging and testing. These are more 
containers that we ex expect to expand upon. Right now we only have one dock, but the expect that we have is more will be added there. I think I'm, I think I'm just gonna grab this picture. Um, so I'm gonna just can copy it, right? Copy, copy image. So I'm gonna say this is the uh, is a mock that we used as a talking point. So distribution, debugging, um, we want to note, okay, see the image below for some suggestion, suggested items that will go there. Um, and then Regarding the architecture nav, we imagine that that will have, do, so do we have anything in the architecture? No, we don't have any. I think that one's gonna want like an introduction. Um, an introduction type page. explaining how things fit together. And then patterns help one decide how to put together. I always spell together wrong. Um, put together the Tari pieces of the The, the other things we will include are items such as the build tools and front end frameworks. as noted in that image, but also things like, um, so there's a, there's a few people that are involved in projects in like the Java space or some of those other like tooling spaces that want a GUI and want to be able to do system things with the language they care about. Um, and that's painful right now. One way that we can kind of support that in Tari is through the sidecar. Uh, so the app ends up bundling in the code for the front end, which would be in a web view. So HTML, CSS, JS. It um, also pulls in a binary or something that's runnable uh, by the main Tari core. So then and that all gets wrapped up into like a, an exe or something and that the exe or you know whatever platform so the tari process then it can start up that sidecar and run that uh various various ways that you can do that um through the rest side of things but then that ends up being a, a an easy way to spinning up an app for some more of these like system level tooling DevOps kind of things. A um, bunch of the Apache stuff and um, I think that was with OpenRefine um, and they were saying they 
that's Java or in Java. So they want to use Tari as kind of a GUI wrapper around that. Um, so that's the other thing that we're going to be putting into this architecture. Uh, so also things like um, other languages <clears throat> and how they fit into Tari via a sidecar or we can um, note feature expected bindings. So I, I think the architecture is uh, going to expand a bunch. That's basically going to be like the, the catch-all for the like, I have a thing and I want to get it into Tari. How do I do that? Does that make sense? Because there's lots of external things that you could bring, bring in Atari. And we, it doesn't make sense to, for us to try to document everything completely. Each of these things have their own documentation. So it makes sense to like point to that documentation. But there's some glue that has to happen. And that, that glue is the stuff that we, uh, that we need to take care of in Atari. So I think um debugging and testing oh debugging and testing got nested over. We want to go that. Okay. Is there anything else that I needed to comment on? Um I think that's about it. So let's let's see if we can do a little bit with this getting started. Because I definitely want to get that done. Um and then we might stub some stuff out. So comment. Okay. Um let us do that code would open. Okay. Um So getting started, um, I guess what we could do is a separate heading that's like uh, getting set up. Getting set up, we'll have like an introductory post. It'll be prerequisites and then these three setup things. We can skip that straight into getting started. Um, and we also had, did I move those? Um, there was a few that we had that did I delete them? Some renames. Some migration was deleted. <clears throat> All right, intro. So I think this is probably the one. Set up your environment. Yeah. So I think we use this. We just strip out a bunch of it. Like we don't really need. When we're getting started, we don't really need to. But so like. I think part of the issue was getting started wasn't actually getting started. It was background and getting set up. So we want to split out getting set up. We definitely need that as like a first thing. But that doesn't need to be... Um, and I guess we don't actually need a heading then. It could just be straight up getting started. Um. Okay, so getting started, would we wrap in getting set up within this? 
I can kind of see it. I don't know. I th I think we do want this though. So I'm going to just grab the raw file. Um So I think what we end up wanting to do is Let's look at the sidebar. Sidebar, we want close that for now. Actually, I do.
All right. Okay. Something funky. I kind of wonder if the app went to try to update. <laughs> Thanks. I kind of wonder if the app went to update and then it flipped out. Interesting. All right. Um, yeah, definitely like kind of quasi crashed the app. Interesting. All right. Uh, so let's see if we can. I have no idea where I got cut off. Um, I think I was just was I typing somewhere. <laughs> now I'm all distracted. Requisites. So getting started, I think what I was doing is I was going to nest this. I think that's what I was what I was getting to. So we we're going to do um, this, and then this. Okay. Now the question is, what is this? What is this heading going to be called? So we have prerequisites, and then we've got. Um, Set up deep dive. Oh, this is like the system level setup. Um, do I just call it setup prerequisites setup? I mean, I guess that's not terrible. I started no, I did. Learn start. All right, I definitely have too many of these open now. Um, go there. There we go. Now we gotta wait for that to start up. Yeah, it kind of looks like they pushed an update to the app and then uh, that flipped it out. It was trying to download it or something, maybe. Shrug. Got it recorded though, so. <laughs> uh, Send that off and see what they think. It seems like that was potentially the issue, though. All right, so we got we got it a website. I do feel like.
Got it. That's it. Yep. Yes, not by choice. I think something went wonky with the update script. Because I just started getting a notification for an update. But it, like, cuts my audio. And it makes it go non responding. So awkward. We'll finish this up and uh, call it a day. <laughs> Especially if it keeps cutting it out. Thanks for the uh, heads up, Nikki, by the way. And hey, Chris. <laughs> I definitely, uh, since I'm all distracted again anyways. Um, so playing with the mic can. I was asking in their Discord too, like, I feel like I should be getting up in the speaking area more. Um, and it sounds like it's not as important as this graph leads me to believe. And basically what we were doing on stream the other day was sort of the right thing to do. Um, set the mic gain relative to the background noise and bump up the mic output to get me into the talking range. Although I'm not, my normal talking isn't getting quite up there. Probably stand to do it a little bit more, eh? Maybe. Yeah, I could go louder for sure. Yeah, this this feels pretty good. Because I feel like that was a loud talk. And I feel like that was a good peak. But my normal talking is probably right around here. And then I did bump up the noise suppression too, which it seems to help with the fan a little bit more. Um, and then I did a bunch of EQ things as best as I could, <laughs> but yeah, I'll have to grab that software update. Hopefully it uh, fixes things. Um, all right. So we are actually doing a little bit of what we were talking about, Chris, the other day about the moving the getting set up and I am spinning up a quick, like high level. These are the things you need. Um, requires, tire requires a few things. Tari has some requirements. No, we're using prerequisites. Prerequisites to build an app. Each operating system so each operating system has its own requirements but if you have done development with rust and i mean technically you don't need node but I think I'm just going to hit on the like 80 some percent and say, if we, if you've done development with Rust and Node, it is possible. I don't know that I like this for bridge, but, um, so each operating has its own requirements. These may be met if you have done development with Rust and Node. Um, and I think I think we just do kind of a high level. <clears throat> 
I don't need that. I mean, I think I could say. This guy assumes that you'll know what the command line is. How to install packages on your operating system. I mean, I kind of feel like I see why they did this, but. It's probably something in the getting started that we can talk through. Um, And I think in each OS level thing, we could get a little bit more specific. So if somebody like doesn't know these things, we can point out to this. So I don't think we really need to call it out. Because we don't have to make the assumption. We just need to be able to provide direction for somebody to be able to fill that, um, fill in that background. So I, I think I'm going to say, um, I don't, that's what I was just about to write bullet point rust node. I don't know that it's necessarily a node greater than 14, but, um, I don't know if I'm even going to be specific, specific about the version. Because we have engines and ways of notifying people if they have a version that isn't compatible. Yeah. Yeah, and like just keeping that updated too. Um, I, I, th I think when going through the getting started, that's going to kind of come up through that. And if we have you know, an engines field and other ways of notifying them of having something that is not going to work with it. Then I think, uh, like, I think we have a minimum version specified in the Tari tool chain for Rust as well. So like, I think we could probably say, um, I got too many ifs. So Atari has some prerequisites to build an app. Each operating system has its own requirements. These may be met already if you have done development with Rust and Node. These may have been met already. If you, these may have been met already. on your previous development work. Um, Tari needs Rust. Um, node for build tooling. Um, I kind of want to be, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess we can clear up why it's optional in the like getting started. Uh, optional. And then I think we say something like tools or something. Um,
Because at a high level, I think it's mostly like build essential. I mean, some of these other things we kind of do need to. Um, and I think we've now confirmed that we don't need GCC. So I think we just need Xcode. Um, and we need those. So I could probably just say um, OS specific build tooling. Say something like Linux. Do I even list them here? I'm, I, I'm even tempted not to list them here. Um, so, um, I don't know that I would even mention until doing, yeah. Like, I don't want to give them not enough here. So we, um, I'm pretty sure we've confirmed GCC. So we, we, we do actually, in each of the separate OS list, or in the, each of the separate OS things, have like a full breakdown. And we'll probably want to like tweak the wording in this a little bit. But like, I think we've confirmed that we don't need GCC. I think maybe what, what I do is just say, um, because what we want to do is we want to clue in somebody to sort of mentally skip over this if they think they have it. So we can say, something like this. Um, We'll just say C plus plus build tools, and like, oh, that didn't work. Uh, why did it do that? There we go. The line twenty. I line shifted around. Oh, line 18. Yeah, okay, yep, uh -huh. I think I'm gonna get rid of. Um, I think I'm just gonna take that out. So, um, for more information on Platform specific build tooling. See these guys to get started. And that's running. So we should be able to do this. And I feel like that probably, I feel like that's good. feels good. And honestly, I don't even need this. Like, boom. That gets you to each one of those. I think those, nope, I broke the links. Of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, I didn't break. I, I I did break the links. I just the thing that I copy and pasted uh, was not updated yet. Um, yeah. So like, I I think that's probably going to talk or work the best, because then as you come into it, you're gonna you click on getting started. I need to fix that link. Um, 
guess I go to I'm just getting oh it doesn't have like sublinks interesting okay so I need to fix that top now what do you, what, what do you think about that Chris I feel like that feels good. And like this has come up from multiple people. So like you're definitely not alone in this. Um I think it was pretty clear that what we were discussing was something that is worthwhile to worthwhile to do. It's not something that I, I'm gonna need to convince anybody about. Um it's in the config. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Um, I don't think the software is freezing. I think it might potentially be part of their software update process. But it looks like what's happening is somehow the mic is getting duplicated, and I have two beacon mics plugged in. Stopped moving before. I'm not sure when they were talking about, like a while back. Just now when it stopped. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I I think it's some something weird going on with the update process. And or somehow the mic is getting duplicated. But it doesn't actually in the app it duplicates the mic, but I'm not actually getting duplicated audio devices. So the app then starts routing from mic we're still trying to route from mic one, but technically this ends up becoming mic two. Well, we'll shoot the bot over. So they've got uh, the ways to debug. Um, okay, so I think this probably feels good now. Like nothing here. Setup's all there. First Tari app goes right into this. And I think this is good. Um, and now. I feel like that that kind of alleviates the questions that we had around that. And then um, I did want to what time we got? I think I'm gonna stub out a couple of things in the architecture real quick, just so that is a little bit more obvious what we're trying to do here. Um, pull back this. So we want. Um, 